time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. By far, one of my favorite players in recent memory to come in as an undrafted free agent and just excel. As soon as this guy touched the ball the very first time, everybody saw what we've been talking about, and that's Jordan Mason. He comes in number 33, the running back on this list. Last year, 67. He was my highest undrafted free agent last year, and he jumped 34 spots this year. And I want to move him up more. I am not comfortable with him at 33. Jordan Ponchez Mason goes by JP. That's what everybody refers to him as. Dude was just awesome. Um, and, you know, I understand a, a, I talk for a living. Um, and, yeah, sometimes I'm going to pound my chest. I'm pounding my chest on this dude. I recognized right away when I first turned on the film of him at Georgia Tech that, dude, this guy's pretty freaking amazing. Um, went under the radar. We'll talk about why and all those things, but everybody loves this guy. Shout out to Josh, 40 Irons Guru. Uh, great job researching um, our number 33 player for the 2023 season. Where's jersey number 24, Jordan Mason? 5'11", 225. Big dude. I mean, he is stout. And sometimes you'll get bigger bodied backs that play small. Um, sometimes you get small backs that play big. Jordan Mason's a big back that plays big. His body style and his running style absolutely are in sync, and I think that's why he has so much success. 30-inch arms, short arms, doesn't really matter for running backs. 24 years old. He's young. 4.58, um, you know, 40-yard dash. He's not a speedster, but straight line is where he goes. 1.57, 10-yard, pretty solid. 7.13 cone, okay. 33 vertical, 21 bench press reps. He's thick. <laughs> He's thick. He went to Gallatin High School, the Green Wave. Um, eventually went to Georgia Tech. Business administration is his degree. He was a three-star recruit coming out. Now, listen to some of this stuff about him growing up. Began playing football at age of five in the South. That's pretty normal. Um, you know, he was the runner-up for Tennessee's Class 5A Mr. Football Award, which is a very prestigious program. 5A, that's big-time school. First team All-State, 2016 Sumner County Player of the Year, uh, All-District, All-County, all those things. Served as team captain as a high school, in his high school. He earned three letters. Um, get this, this is awesome. He was the center fielder on the baseball team. He was the back-to-back -back year starter as the center on basketball. So center, center field, center in basketball, and running back. Um, his first cousin, Zacchaeus Mason, played college basketball at Ole Miss, um, went on to play for France in the Philippines and, you know, professionally, does all those things. So understanding, I, I think those things are important because you have somebody in your family that you can talk to about what being a professional athlete's about, what to do, what to stay away from, things like that. I think it's important. In his spare time, he likes to bowl um, and wants to work in a shoe company after football. Again, he's a business admin uh, guy, so curious to see what that's going to look like. Now, he went kind of under the rails, and a lot of the people know his name now, but they didn't back then. Jamar Gibbs. Jamar Gibbs was the running back one at Georgia Tech. We know now he went top 15 in this year's draft before he transferred to Alabama. Well, it was Jamar Gibbs one, and behind him was Jordan Mason. You know, Georgia Tech didn't really have great years, but they were stocked at the running back position, and that's why J.P. Mason went under the radar was because he was buried on the depth chart. And so the Niners kind of were able to get him as an undrafted free agent. And when he stepped on the field, it was over. Like, some people just passed the eye test. I think Jalen Graham's one of those rookies this year. Like, as soon as that first preseason game happened, it was like, that guy's different. That's exactly what it was like with J.P. Morgan last year. Hey, listen to these numbers. For his rookie year, 43 rush attempts. Not that much. He wasn't used near as much as he should have been. 258 yards, six yards per rushing attempt, six. That's crazy. Only one touchdown, but man, this dude, and, and again, all right, you could say, well, he had some big long runs, whatever else. The teammates have called him the closer because they put him in for the four-minute offense when we have a lead, downhill running, he's moving forward. He had 86 offensive snaps, which means he's getting the ball every other snap whenever he's on the field. 86 offensive snaps, 43 carries. 92.9 overall grade on PFF. He was the second highest graded player, not on offense, the whole team. Trent Williams, J.P. Mason. 
<laughs> from a pro foot like just to show you how effective he was on those snaps. Seven 10 plus yard runs, 11 first downs and 86 snaps. That is stupid, man. And you got to remember Niners faced the most loaded boxes last year down the stretch whenever he was getting these carries. And my favorite play from him last year was the Thursday night game in Seattle to win the division. You know, the game got out of control and they called back the pick six or the fumble for a touchdown. Should have been over, but whatever. Ball was like, we had about five minutes left and just driving, 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 then busted it on that like 60 plus yard run. And that was it. Game was over. It was so cool, man. So shout out to him. Now, what does it look like this year? The 49ers want Elijah Mitchell to be the number two behind CMC. And I think that he's earned that right. He's that damn good. Can he stay healthy? He struggles with that. Hopefully he does. But I'm telling you right now, I do not see a drop-off at all going from Elijah Mitchell to J.P. Mason. I don't see it. I think that Jordan Mason's closer to Elijah Mitchell than he is to Ty Davis Price. And I don't think that's an insult to TDP. I think that he's improved a lot. I would have no qualms whatsoever if TDP was the number two ahead of Elijah Mitchell. I'm not saying that's what should happen, but I'm just saying those two guys are so similar. The difference is with as hard as Elijah Mitchell runs, he doesn't have the body for that. They run very similar. The difference, J.P. Mason's built different. He's built different. His body can handle it. Elijah Mitchell, he's smaller, he's faster, but he runs as aggressive as Jordan Mason, and that's why I think a lot of those injuries, not all of them, continue to compound. But Jordan Mason ain't going anywhere. He's going to be around, and I hope, I really hope that if injuries do happen at the running back position, Kyle Shanahan trusts this kid because he is, they're special to him. There's just, he's a lock to make this 53. I there's he's a lock man and he is so good and people talk about trading do not trade this man he's a free player on the salary cap free he doesn't count against the top 51 i'm excited to see what he's going to do eventually but you know we've got him at 33 just because he's buried on the roster but man he is special i love this guy uh but for us we got to move on we'll keep counting him down here